music. There we go. Let's, uh, let's look for some other tracks to, uh, play after this one is done. Actually, um... Oh, I didn't close Google. Oops. <laughs> that would be important. Uh, let's get the Ori soundtrack. Why not? Ye. Uh, I'm gonna pick Blind Forest because, well, we're still doing our LP on the fir uh, on the second game. Yeah. Close that. Oop. And yeah. Hey, Jen. Hey, Crystal. Um, as you can guess, our, uh, newest commission has to do with Lily, owned by, well, Jen. <laughs> um, Me. so she wants her character Lily in, uh, the Mitsuzune, Mitsusune armor from, uh, Monster Hunter. Um, I apologize that I couldn't, uh, stream the other day. Again, I was, like, feeling mega exhausted, um... So, I basically slept like a log, and, um, I'm much better today. So, we're, we're gonna get started on this. And, um, I may use bits and pieces of, uh, the kimono piece, um, if I deem them worthy, but I'm gonna try and vary up the colors a little bit more, because, um, I do like the idea of a more reddish coloration. So to start, we're going to pose Lily here. And uh, be warned, Regigigas is a little bit on the slow side today. So uh, if something bad happens, I would like to apologize in advance, so... Uh, you know what? I think this body type is close to what we need. Um... Could make her head a little bigger. There we go. Alright. So, uh, Jen, do you want an action-y pose, or do you want, uh, something a little more casual? Oh! Hey, Big Mac, thank you for resubscribing. Uh, 11 months! Uh, after one more month, you're due for something. Um. Casual. Okay. Uh, what do you think about Matt Reeves, the director of The Batman, saying that Mar Marvel would restrict his creative freedom if he worked on something MCU-related? Mm, I would say half and half. I guess it depends on what he wants, uh, what he would bring to a character. It's uh, a little bit of an open-ended question. Uh... Okay, let's find a pose to start with. Whoop. Wait. There you go, arm. Uh. Oh, yeah, uh, Jen. Uh, weird thing. Uh, the arrival date just changed. It's gonna take longer to get here now. Uh, originally it said it would arrive on the 20th. Now it's saying it's gonna arrive on the 21st. <laughs> yeah. Real fucked up. <laughs>
Yeah, um, I mean, my fan is actually working right now for some reason, so I I'm, I'm still excited for it. It's just, um, my fan, for whatever reason, decided, hey, uh, okay, this is the point where I need to start trying now. <laughs> um, but no, uh, still not perfect. Matt Reese's films usually have a cynical side with a bittersweet ending. Okay. Uh, would that work for the MCU? I guess it depends on the character. Um, uh, maybe Daredevil. Uh, Daredevil or Punisher. I, I think those would be good choices. Um, there's another Marvel character that has yet to have a cinematic adaptation, to my knowledge. And uh, that's... Uh, Brian, do you know Doc Samson? No. Yeah, Doc Samson is actually, uh, well, a superhero therapist. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think if they were to make a movie about him, then maybe that, that could be a thing. Um, okay, I like this pose. Uh, and the only reason I know who Doc Simpson is, is, um, well, Spider-Man Edge of Time made, made an Easter egg about him. <laughs> uh, there, there's this, uh, announcer in Alchemix, uh, Peter's Alchemix, when you, uh, start playing as him, uh, where they go about different, um, superhero Easter eggs, and Doc Samson was one of them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. It basically depends on the character. Yeah. Um, basically characters who are already, uh, on the darker side of the Marvel Universe, like Daredevil, Punisher, and, well, others. I mean, Moon Knight is already a bit on the dark spectrum. Um, can't name specifics because of how new it is still, but, yeah. Okay, so you have a heart, heart shape to your head. There we go. say though um the more stuff i see of the batman the movie not not the cartoon uh the movie it's like i i want to see it God damn it, I can't stop thinking about something in my ass now. <laughs> something in my ass. It's something in, in my, my ass. ass. Mm. <laughs> Someone drew FIFA wearing yours outfit. Oh, your forger? Yep. Oh, okay. You know, if you change one letter in yours name, it becomes Fulgers. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if any anyone's pointed that out yet. <laughs> it 
There's a lot of tufts in Lily's hair, I noticed. Uh, have you ever heard of the Christmas pig turducken? I've heard of turducken and have had turducken, but never the pig. Never the pig version. <laughs> but have you heard of the high elves? <laughs> no. Then pay with your blood! <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop right there, criminal scum! <laughs> Or, I don't know you, and I don't care to know you. <laughs> or, oh, very well. I shall be at the arena when you want someone to worship the ground you walk on. Bye bye Falls off a cliff and dies. Yeah. Her and kept in wild hair. Yeah. Actually, I did see another Oblivion video where, uh, basically, uh, so the player went downstairs after, I don't know, looting the place or something, and they saw that a guard was, like, turning their head in an awkward way, and it turns out as you look over the, the bar counter, uh, the owner is, like, sleeping on a cot. So they were watching the owner sleep. That's creepy. Yeah! <laughs> uh, the video itself was even titled Creepy Guard. <laughs> Like, what is Oblivion? <laughs> and can I run I, it? I don't know. Um, I'm definitely never gonna stream Skyrim, but, um, Morrowind and Oblivion, most certainly. Don't you and, mean Scrim? Ah, uh, yes, Scrim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I sometimes, I, sometimes I forget that I was the one who came up with that nickname. <laughs> Scrim. I'm sorry. I don't know where my I don't know where my head was. Scrim. Uh, <laughs> but what's yeah, Skyrim? that game doesn't exist. Yeah, no, Scrim exists though. Definitely exists, and it just works. Anyway, um, yeah, um, Oblivion and Morrowind are definitely games I would like to stream one day, along with a no nude mod Witcher Three. But <laughs> yeah, um. The only way to show you guys The Witcher 3 and why I like that game so much is to specifically play it on PC and make sure that I download the No Nude mod. <laughs> because what's Witcher without the sex? You could you could be like Keaton where she played Resident Evil 8 with the uh, No Shirt Chris mod. <laughs> well... The uh the internet doesn't cry when they see see a topless man. They cry when they see a topless woman. Oh, Dana, speak of the devil. Hey. <laughs> put a no nude mod on Witcher. Put a no nude mod on the Elder Scrolls games. Wait, put a nude mod on the Elder Scrolls game. Oh shit. <laughs> um, at least for our main character, because it's like we're never gonna go and in, go into third person mode, right? <laughs> 
I sense the Elder Scrolls talk in my bones. Yeah, like, we were just talking about the Elder Scroll, at least the little things that we know, and then you showed up. It's like, that was very uncanny, actually. <laughs> it's like, ah, you have summoned me. Are, are, you, are, you, are you spying on my VPN, Dana? <laughs> Stop it. It's like, ah, yes, Jordan, you have summoned me. <laughs> Ah, is someone talking about playing Morrowind and Oblivion? <laughs> my, my Dana impression's horrible. <laughs> yeah, Oblivion. Oblivion. Ah! Uh, <laughs> that face! And now I shall show you some of my favorite armor sets in Monster Hunter. Uh, the Christmas picture docking is a quail egg stuffed inside a sparrow, stuffed inside a quail, stuffed inside a duck, stuffed inside a chicken, stuffed inside a goose, stuffed inside a turkey, stuffed inside a hundred pound pig. It also contains root veggies, barbecue leather, bacon, pepperoni and Italian sausages, uh, herb gremolata, a stuffing made from baguettes, rosemary, parsley, sage, cranberries, onions, celery, milk, quail eggs, and pork fat, and baked apples. How many quail eggs are in this recipe? But can it run Quake? <laughs> can it run Doom? That's what I want to know. Can it run Doom? <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I'm looking at the armor and subconsciously I'm going, okay, where do we start? Um, so I'm gonna break it down into shapes and then add details as I go. How does that sound? Okay, so there's a... Bit of a furry tuft thing right there. It was made for multiple people. Okay. Um, I don't know about that, but, um, I don't think I told you guys yet, but I actually made, uh, French dip sandwiches for the first time today. Um, you know, roast beef, some baguettes, um, Swiss cheese, and, uh, well, I made, my, I made my own au jus. I don't think it's so much au jus as it is gravy, but I just, you know, use beef stock, some flour, water, and a little soy sauce to give it some tang. And, yeah, it, um, it tasted nice. Um, the, the cheese came out really, really goopy when I took it out of the, uh, uh, toaster oven, though, because, um, I know one recipe calls for, you know, broiling, um, the, the, the actual sandwich itself, but I also dipped it in the au jus to give it that extra moist, uh, moisture. Um, it definitely came out really soggy, but it was tasty. Um, I think it would have been good if I, um, you know, marinated both, uh, you know, toasted both ends after marinating it. And there's a bug on my laptop. Die. Sorry, I had to whack the bug because it was on my screen. There was no way I there was no way that wouldn't have happened. It's a it, it's a touch screen, uh, if you guys are wondering. Um not that I use that much. Um, but yeah, um, among the other things I got from the store, uh, just more hoagie ingredients, and, uh, I got some ground beef, beef and actual, um, Parmesan cheese, like, not, not the grated stuff, um, that you put on pizza, but rather, um, the actual block of, uh, Parmesan cheese, um, I I'm forgetting the name right now, but, um, they, they had some while I was in the store, and I was like, snag it. So I'm going to make uh, meatballs with actual Parmesan, so I'm excited for that. I'm just hoping I don't burn my hand again. Because, you know, uh, that experience with when I got my hand burned really turned me off from cooking for a while. 
especially with oil and it's like i'm wondering i'm wondering even if i am careful i'll burn myself again so you know i thanks for giving myself ptsd me <laughs> Yeah, imagine giving yourself PTSD. Hmm. Um, are you guys going to be watching Chainsaw Man when it comes out? I'm not, because I don't know what it is. <laughs> I mean, okay, I've heard of it. But, and I know the basic premise, but... Mm. I know Heaton adores it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, speaking of which, Jordan, uh, I was on Heat and Stream yesterday, and we were talking about a subject matter that I thought, I feel like would be interesting if you also gave a bit of your input on this. Uh, what's up? Um, uh, what are certain opinions that you would hear that would be, like, an immediately, like, an immediate red flag? Like, if, if say, like, if somebody says they don't like a certain fictional character, what character would that be that gives you an immediate red flag uh melia <laughs> See, uh, if, if, if someone doesn't like melia that's an immediate red flag yeah <laughs> uh another one would be uh samus um another one would be spider-man because like everyone loves spider-man come on <laughs> uh he also said spider-man yeah 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 like, if you uh, she also mentioned Kirby because she said mm -hmm. that she actually knows people who don't like Kirby and they turned out to be terrible people. <laughs> yeah, like, you're totally right. I, I, you know what, I'm with, I'm with Heaton on this one. Like, if you don't like Kirby, you're a monster. <laughs> you're a monster you're in mon disguise. Y you're the monster you say Kirby is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chainsaw Man is Evil Dead if it was animated. Denji is also a pervert like a Ashley J. Williams. Okay. Um, what's there to not like about Kirby? He's just a round little man. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think in Japan, uh, Kirby is genderless. Yeah. Or at least um, they don't go by gender pronouns. They're just shaped like a friend, so, you know, they don't, they don't need a gender. Yep. Uh... Another one we also said that if you don't like Anya from Spice Family, then that's a red flag. Uh-huh. That's that's very true. I agree with that. Yeah. We also thought of ones that are like gender specific red flags. Like uh -huh. if you're a guy who doesn't like uh who who like has a massive hatred for Ray Skywalker, then that's a red flag. Yeah, I mean I know, I know people in general don't like Rey, but that's mainly because they f they feel like she was stepping on the toes of the characters of the original trilogy. Um, I like I like Rey more than most people, but she's not the worst thing Star uh, the Star that's ever happened to Star Wars. That's the ho that's the holiday special, <laughs> <laughs> which apparently is canon. It it, it is actually canon, Brian. <laughs> Sadness. Meaning meaning that the um. The Yellow Submarine animation is also canon. <laughs> or at least uh, it was animated by the same people who did the Yellow Submarine music video. Well. And uh, that was Boba Fett's debut. <laughs> and apparently he was really awesome there. Huh. Big red flag. When someone says that The Last of Us 2 is the best game ever. No, it's not! <laughs> They made their employees watch actual corpses getting fiddled with just to emulate what it's like for a person to die. What the fuck? They gotta get the accuracy. There's accuracy and then there's... Whatever the fuck that was. Also, stop making your employees crunch. Jesus. But we need it done. I feel like not really caring for her is fine, but when people get really loud about it, it's like, bro, she's no worse than Luke. But I'm also not a Star Wars fan. Le okay, Luke is a bit better, but let's face it. Um, because I agree with 
um, Cinema wins on this when he touched on the subject. Every single Skywalker is a whiner. Every single one of them. Anakin, Luke, and Leia. Like, at the start, they always complained about something. Um, but then as, you know, their stories progress, they get less and less annoying. Which, um, is a bit of a weird staple character development for Star Wars characters. Even Ahsoka is that way. Because, um... Yeah, everyone loves Ahsoka now, but there was a time when everyone hated her because, you know, she was genuinely not written very well. So, um, then they thought, okay, let's actually start trying with her. And then she ended up being, um, everyone's favorite character. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was a point in time when Ahsoka was really annoying, needy, and, um, is a lot like Anakin, except, you know, make his traits way worse than her. <laughs> Like, if you thought he was whiny in episode two, <laughs> you haven't seen and then, Ahsoka. And then you have, he's holding me back! Yeah, he's holding me back! <laughs> or, I killed them. I killed them all. And not just the men, but the women. And the children, too. Like, how <laughs> specific. It's like, why would you do that? And it's like, Padme, what do you see in this kid? Also, Anakin was only 25 when the Clone Wars were happening. Just a random fact for you, I guess. And then I became Darth Vader. Did you kill the dogs? They're like animals, so I slaughtered them like animals. I hate them! <laughs> Seriously, uh, what did I miss? I came back to see everyone talking about who, uh, someone who doesn't like her. Oh, yeah, well, we're talking about, um general red flags about someone when you know when it comes to characters like if they don't yeah, like, like this character then they're a bad person yeah like what, what like if you hear someone say like you know they don't like this character like what character would you say that someone would say that they dislike which would give you an immediate red flag yeah uh i cited melia and spider-man and well now kirby is uh my picks Actually, uh, when I was still working at Pizza Hut, fuck that place, um, when I was still working at Pizza Hut, there was actually this one guy, uh, who thought Ahsoka was still as bad as she used to be uh, in, like, the very early points in, in the Clone Wars, and I was like, okay, dude, clearly you haven't been seeing a lot of Clone Wars stuff since then. Like, are you kidding me? She's awesome now. <laughs> she got two lightsabers. Yeah, and they're both white, which is super rare. Yeah, it's actually mega rare in the context of Star Wars. Um, and I believe it symbolizes uh, Force wielders who are, you know, totally neutral. Yeah. Or rather, they don't they don't really uh, adhere to the light side of the Force or the dark side of the Force. Like they uh, are on both ends uh, equally. Which means at this point, I think both. Um, the Jedi and the Sith should reconsider their methods because it seems Ahsoka has something figured out here. Be a great Jedi. Actually, um, I know Brooke mentioned this, but, uh, if you think the Jedi are bad people and yet you're a Sith apologist, that's a red flag? That's very true. Like, there are some good Sith out there, but they're very, very few and far between because Sith by nature are selfish people. Um, actually, I think, I even think, you know, Sith, uh, most Sith aren't good people, uh, in the main continuity, because I know in the Expanded Universe, um, back when that was canon, there was at least one Sith who was objectively good. Like, despite his dark powers, he used it to help people. Um, in a more entrepreneurial sense, but yes. Um... I really want to play uh, Warner Brothers Multiverses, but as with most games, that uh, that looks promising. It's not for Switch. Right. Um, I got to talk about Kirby on Kevin's livestream on Tuesday. Awesome. Uh, I thought that was purple. What, the lightsaber color? No, uh, actually, if you want the boring answer, uh, Samuel L. Jackson just wanted Mace Windu's lightsaber to be purple because he liked purple. And I know there's some rumors out there saying that he has, like, two copies of his lightsaber. You know, 
one for the general movie and then the other for himself, which says badass motherfucker. Uh, Samuel Jackson. Yeah, Big Mac, your opinion is nothing new. <laughs> but would you believe me, uh, guys, would you believe me if I told you that Jar Jar Binks in the Clone Wars cartoon series is actually a good character? Yeah, I can't believe I said that either, but he's actually really cool there. Miss a what? Yeah, he's a little bit of a badass, not gonna lie. <laughs> But then again, that's what happens when you have Dave Filoni on the writing team. <laughs> and if you guys like The Mandalorian, you're you're gonna love The Clone Wars. It just, it's definitely better if you're already a fan of Star Wars than, you know, going in blind. Because, well, yeah, that's, um, it's so dense and so, it's got so much history to it that if you're not already a Star Wars fan uh, before going into it, then you're probably going to be really lost. Um, so I would actually get started with uh, Star Wars Rebels and then uh, work your way down to uh, Clone Wars. Um, oh, they also make a joke about Metachlorians. <laughs> As they should. Yeah. Actually, uh, I think uh, the context for the Metachlorians joke is that it was basically someone getting an erection in a bar. <laughs> yeah, they went there. It's surprising how many things they got away with with, with uh, Clone Wars. I mean, not just with the deaths. Like, Clone Trooper... Uh, there was a Clone Trooper who literally got, you know, bisected by an elevator shaft. It was off screen, sure, but you can hear you can hear the result. You can hear the Yes, you actually can. You joke, but you can. And do we even need to say anything about beheadings? It's Star Wars. Uh, I remember a kid who actually was not allowed to see Star Wars, period, just because there's beheadings in it. Like, there's no blood, it's just a head falling off. Like uh Beheadings existed. They it's, happened. It's what happens when sharp meets neck. Or, you know, really, really strong plasma blades, you know, collides with flesh. Um, I still won't forgive him for giving the Emperor all the power. Well, he didn't know that! <laughs> he didn't- he didn't know what was gonna happen. Like, nobody did. <laughs> Um, I saw some great panels of his dad. They were hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jar Jar's dad. Oh, God. Jar Jar's dad. <laughs> Do you know what we're talking about, Brian? No. Okay. So, there was a comic where uh, Jar Jar's family um, was stranded on an island. And to escape Jar Jar's annoying, uh, annoyingness, Jar Jar's dad actually was about to shoot himself in the head with a blaster. And they drew this! But... No. They drew this! It was a comic that was sold to the general public. Am I hammering it in your head yet? Can I still say no? Uh, sure. Okay, well, I still say no. All right. <laughs> but what I am telling you is true, from a certain point of view. So now I post uh, most of my favorite armor sets. Um, I won't be able to see them because I'm focusing on this, but yeah. I will check them out when I can. Okay, and then... Uh, 
I was talking about that. I was talking about Kirby 64 being on the Switch Online, and Kevin was interested in it because he hadn't played a Kirby game before. The closest was in Smash Brothers, although it was a little funny because he called S Smash Brothers All Stars. I mean, he's not wrong. That's kind of what Smash has become over the years. Yeah, Kitsune Mask. He was in PlayStation All Stars as Sly Cooper. Yeah, I think I think that's where he got mixed up, because he was in a very very similar uh, type of game. <laughs> as objectively one of the best characters, I think. Like, what wasn't Sly really good in PlayStation All Stars? Yeah. But so we're no still nowhere near uh, Kratos, right? No. Yeah, no one can touch Kratos. It's like, you know, Kratos in PlayStation All-Stars is basically what Palutena would be if, you know, Palutena never got nerfed. Yeah. I know there's only about one character that apparently was more broken than Kratos. What's that? Cat. Oh, Cat from Gravity Rush? Yeah. Mm, how so? Uh... For one thing, her combo game was really nuts, so she built up AP like crazy. She had very powerful supers that practically guaranteed stocks, and she also had a lot of, like, different means of just resetting the opponent. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I remember they actually had to nerf Sly's level 1 super because it was so fucking broken. Hmm. But I mean, what do you expect? His level 1 super was the Murray. So they nerfed the Murray? How dare they? <laughs> yeah, they, they nerfed the Murray. The Murray does not approve of this patch! Yeah, because the thing about Sly's level 1 super is that Murray traveled such a large distance that it was very hard to avoid him. Hmm. And there was also a thing, too, where even if you killed Sly, if he activated his level 1 super, Murray would still stay on the screen, so you could die even when Sly did. Oh. Uh, who would win the match, though? Um... Uh, Whoever, uh, if it came down to, if it came down to whoever, if they were at, like, both their last stocks and Sly died first, uh, the person still living would win. Okay. Well, if it's the Murray, then it should be overpowered. <laughs> I agree, Dana. Uh, Sly was, like, S tier and Cat was, like, I think double S tier. Or was Sly like an A tier? It's been it's been forever since I've seen the official PlayStation All Stars. I, here. I noticed I think, that you've avoided. It's been a while. Yeah, I think Sly was A tier because like Sly does have a lot of did have like a lot of good tools for like setting up traps, tricking his opponents and whatnot. The one problem with Sly though, he can't block. Oh. Because Sly's gimmick was that when you held down the block button, he turns invisible. Ah. Uh, so they had to make room for his moveset by getting rid of the block button. Yeah, so, like, Sly was not able to block attacks. I mean, on the one hand, good of them to try and adhere to his character. On the other hand, you're not playing Sly to be, you know, tanking damage. But maybe that's what balanced him out. It did. More or less. Yeah, because, you know, again, Sly also had, like, a lot of traps that he could do to set up for, for like, his own combos. Yeah.
actually, seeing as Jen was sending good armor, can I send the worst armor in Oblivion? Uh, sure. <laughs> I don't see my knot. Um, Discord. You know what? Fine. I'll I'll take a peek at them, but I'm gonna like eyeball them. Oh, okay. Uh, Jen, personal thing here, but I see Monster Hunter does that thing with uh, gender specific armor that I hate hate a lot, where um the women are nowhere near as covered as the men are. It's it's not throughout, but it happens on a couple of them. Oh. Dana, what the heck is that? What is this? This armor makes you look like a green lantern. <laughs> <laughs> the drip. Hang on, I'm showing the chat this. Oh, I'm gonna save you in memes, you silly armor. Memes. Maymays. Glass armor. Hmm. Okay, Google, calm down. Glass armor, okay. Uh. Showing everyone on stream, stand by. Okay, what the heck is this? Glass looks fine in Marwind and, and Scrim, but in Oblivion. Uh, look at that drip! I, I mean, uh, what, what makes them look different in those games? Um, again, I haven't played them as nearly as much as you have, so if you would care to enlighten me. Uh, to be fair, the original Smash 64 was called Nintendo All-Stars Smash Brothers in Japan. Um, Cat is double S tier with Isaac Clark. Isaac? What? Uh, Sly is the fourth character in S tier with Cole, Raiden, and Kratos. At least that's what IGN was saying, but for all I know, it could be different. Also, what the... <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm going to get rid of this. I mean, I don't really dislike it. I, I kind of like it, but... Oh, every game has armor designed differently, so they looked entirely different. Even iconic things like Daedric. Yeah, Daedra is the one thing I keep hearing tossed throughout Elder Scrolls in general. What the heck are the Daedra? Are they demons? Are they basically, uh... The Elder Scrolls versions of, of Tieflings? Or what the heck are they? I know, I think, in Oblivion, from what I remember, is the plot is gotta stop them or something. I don't know, it's, it's been years. And I've only seen Alec play, play it a handful of times. Again, I've always seen people uh, play Elder Scrolls games. I rarely got to play them for myself. The one time I did was in college, and that was for Scrim, and then I put it down because I had animations to work on. Okay. Uh, I think there's plenty more uh, we can add on to this, but I think we got the base sketch done. Sort of like demons with Daedric Princess sometimes being worshipped as gods. 
Oh, the specifics can be hard to explain because of the big lore, but basically the enemies are demons. Okay. Um... I guess it's because... I guess it's because of, you know, how I've been writing things recently. Not just for my own writings, but also for D&D. Uh, when you could find uh, a race to an alignment, then um, they're all going to end up the same. And, eh. Evil races don't really jive with me anymore. <laughs> it's like, I would, ra I would rather um, a villain either be, you know, a collective of like-minded individuals uh, who just happen to be part of that race, or um, just a single individual who is, you know, hell-bent on something like world domination or something. Meanwhile, Inosuke. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Zenitsu uh, pisses and shits himself because that's <laughs> all he's good for when he's awake. <laughs> it's like, why can't you just be asleep all the time? <laughs> why can't you be as good as you are when you're asleep? <laughs> I get I get it. I get it. Your senses overload, but you can always, you know, you can do what Bigby does and dull them. I can't. <laughs> like, honestly, guys, um, the more we've been watching Demon Slayer, every time Zenitsu starts fucking screaming, I turn the volume down. <laughs> like, Brian can vouch for me right here. <laughs> like, I turned the volume down because his screaming actually hurts my ears. I hate Zenitsu. That kid fucking sucks. He sucks eggs. You know, it's funny. It reminds me of a joke. No. Well, what were you going to say, Jen? Um, does Mitsuzune have a nose? Uh, Zenitsu checks under his belt for upper rank demons. Uh, upper rank demons check under their beds for Muzan, and Muzan checks under his bed for Yurichi. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Uh, okay. Uh, Dana. Yeah, Daedra certainly aren't all evil. Like, maybe only Molag Bal is. Even, uh, Maruna is Dagon isn't entirely evil and represents the concept of change and revolution. Hence, some details in Oblivion that people miss. Uh, then you have some, some, like, uh, Meridia and... Azura, who are considered good, just assholes. Okay, I would rather I would rather um have good people who are assholes than you know evil people who are assholes for the sake of being assholes, because you know they were bred to be evil. Like even Shadow of Mordor got that right, you know, with the orcs. Like, have you seen how wacky their personalities are? Like, I I don't want to fight these guys. I want to I want to be friends with them. <laughs> Then again, I'm pretty sure the only orc who understands the concept of friendship and love is Ratbag. <laughs> By the That's way, his name. Fun, fun fact, Daki had the hots for Inosuke. <laughs> okay, you know what? It's fine. She's 13. <laughs> and is that true? I, I don't remember that. It, yeah, like, uh, when she, she mentioned, like seeing uh one of the people like around makio and she mentioned that the man the guy was gorgeous ah uh, okay yeah that's right that's right it must have been when uh inosuke was um doing his detective thing right yeah yeah again inosuke really impressed me with his detective skills it was really cool god damn it i'm using the wrong brush uh, I hate it when I do that. Uh, 
Another fear for artists. Hey, stop drawing. Why? You're using the wrong brush. <gasps> also, speaking of PlayStation All-Stars tier list, uh, can we get an F in the chat for Sackboy? <laughs> I would if I knew what Sackboy was like. Sackboy is an example on how you don't nerf a character. Okay. Because Sackboy was actually a really strong character when the game came out. Then they just kept gutting him patch after patch after patch. And like four fucking times with the fourth one only happening because the community wouldn't stop bitching unless he got nerfed again. Hmm. I think I had to rewind one part of something Inosuke said. I was like, did Inosuke get Tanjiro's name right? He did. Once. <laughs> I mean, hey, like, to be <laughs> fair on Inosuke, it was a critical moment. So, I guess, yeah. I guess it made him a little bit more aware of the situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, where Azura lies on the, on the asshole scale sort, sort of depends on how you interpret a lot of Morrowind lore. But in universe, she's called one of the good Daedra. Oblivion is about Merun's, uh, Merun's Dagon invading, which people take as a pretty black and white. But come Skyrim, uh, become Scrim, the Empire itself has fallen apart, and so much has changed, so even though you stopped him, he was entirely successful. Okay. So Oblivion, so Scrim is just basically uh, Dagon's uh, foregone conclusion. Fuck you, Scrim! <laughs> Your oversaturation has doomed the world. And you know what? I bet Dagon uh, was thinking it just works as he was doing his thing. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Uh, he's he's not he's not the uh, the guy who I see dancing in those videos. No, Dagon is someone else. Um, you want to know something with PlayStation All-Stars? Danny had problems with Sackboy during the Big Daddy story mode. It was one of their old videos. Hmm. So yeah, uh, definitely when I, w definitely when I wasn't around. I still remember it, uh, when I joined you guys purely because I strong-armed myself into your call when you were doing Moe Mod. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, PJ, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Let it be known, I didn't. I didn't become an honorary member uh, uh, because people liked me. I strong earned myself into their call. Proof I'm a horrible person. <laughs> no, you stop it. Why would I stop it if it's true? No, Melia says no. <sighs> okay, fine. Always and listen so to your. Always listen to your spouses, guys. <laughs> and so does Samus. Especially if you're in a polygamous relationship with incredible people. <laughs> Dagoth Ur, yeah, that, that's it, Dana. Thank you. Dagoth Ur. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of, sorry. <laughs> and Cynthia says, get over here. Um, even with other characters, she still had problems with him. Well, I think purely that's because uh that was when Sack if what you say, what you guys are saying is true, that's when uh, Sackboy was at the height of its nerfness. Yeah. Like, even though the character was already bad, they kept nerfing it. And it's like, okay, stop. They're already nerfed. What are you doing? <laughs> stop. He's already dead. What is it like a Pichu situation? Were they were they trying to make? make Sackboy the new Pichu? Because Pichu was only nerfed once, okay? And, um, they were still usable. Then again, they, uh, then again, uh, the new, uh, Pichu was probably what happened after, you know, the Smash Ultimate devs saw what they did, uh, to Sackboy in PlayStation All-Stars and like, okay, we're gonna nerf Pichu once, but that's it. <laughs> Like, we, we're, we still need to make make them playable. <laughs> the, 
that's what I choose to believe. <laughs> Uh, speaking of scrim, <laughs> I like its soundtrack. Scrum. Scrim. Scroom. Scrimble bimble. Scream! <laughs> you know what? Hey guys, welcome to my stream of Scream! <laughs> <laughs> So we're we're going to make um, a Khajiit uh, fighter. <laughs> I don't know. I like the Khajiit. Yeah, I I like them. That's that's my only that's my only criteria. I like them. Grim is my favorite game to ignore the gameplay of and just take pretty screenshots. Oh, you you purely you purely played the game just to make screenshots of it? Wow, you're terrible. <laughs> In all seriousness, I found some encouraging mods for gameplay. It doesn't fix the quest, but at least gameplay can be fun. Um Oh yeah, Crystal, I I um read this in the Spake Me Eagle chat, but for those of you here. I've already posted this on SNG, but I got 100% of my animation final. Congrats! I don't know my final grade in that class, but I got an A plus in music and film, and a B in magic and religion. That's awesome, Crystal. Ugh. I'm happy for you. Oh god, it just occurred to me. Uh screaming kind of is what? Uh screaming kind of is your principal power in um Oblivion. Sorry, scrim. Scrim, 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 scrim. Uh it's your principal power in scrim, by the way. You know, dragon shouts. Yeah. because it couldn't handle the Elder Scrolls music, apparently. Well, Ori, you are really loud. Yeah, Ori, for some reason, is really loud today. Yeah, I knew that it was a slip of the tongue. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I like how, I like how, Bo uh, by the way, uh, this is something I no noticed about Boone. Every time you make a slip of the tongue, he, like, freaks out. It's like, no, that's not how it works! <laughs> but that's not what you said. It's like, calm down, it was a slip of the tongue. <laughs> it happens. Nothing against him, it's just something funny I noticed about him. It's like, at that point, it's like, semantics. <laughs> Unless if it's factually wrong, then yeah. And the rest, you are screamless. 
So you you scream and you scrim and scream, but you don't Skyrim in the other games. Uh, a pot of tea, pot of tea, something, uh, Svali. <laughs> Hold devil's pot of tea. Hold oh, that's, that's God of War. Of that's God of War. <laughs> <laughs> Still the idea that Kira is Sugash's wingman. Of course, they're, they're adoptive brother and sister at this point. Yeah. Which Lord means you are, uh, you are an honorary sister along with Esmeralda. Jordan, I has to leave. So soon? Yeah, because there's no second shift on tonight. Oh, f fuck the fuck. All right. Good luck, man. Bye. <sighs> Poor guy needs a better job. All right. In the other games, you can make spells to exploit the mechanics to become godlike, so who's the real winner? Uh, I guess those games, because... Scrim is milked to fuck. Huh? Who joined? Uh, oh, hey, Jen! I mean, you could have joined earlier, but welcome. Hello. Uh, hey, you could have joined earlier, but well, uh, welcome. Uh, I was eating dinner, so... <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I hit spaghetti. I'm actually thinking of going ahead and making uh, making that uh, tonight after the stream. You know, considering no, I, I, I got the actual uh, block of Parmesan cheese to work with. Hey. I'm probably going to be very liberal with my use of the tongs, though, because I definitely don't want to use my hands again when cooking. <laughs> I don't want to get burnt again. It's no. not fun. I mean, honestly, I didn't even use my hands uh, when I got burned the first time. It's like, I stupidly, uh, because I, I think I was also half asleep that day. Um, so I stupidly, like, flipped the steak in, you know, the pan of sizzling potatoes and oil. So that oil happened to splash towards me instead of away from me. Ow. And now I have PTSD when it comes to, um, you know, flying oil. Also, Dana, as your as your sister, I suggest you would be careful. Never got a burn as bad as yours, though. I mean, have some cool scar. I have some cool scars in place of uh, where I got burned, though. So, <laughs> um, I I used to scream. I used to scream like I was in scrim screaming back then. But I did think think it did uh one too many times because nowadays i'm scared of tr trying to raise my voice without thinking i'm gonna damage my throat um yeah no i'm not dana be careful <laughs> dana as your uh, american sister i would say please be careful oh, please. She's, oh oh she said she said please you can't ignore her now well, now now what <laughs> oh, okay, okay, you said please. Said please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you bet she Good. did. Good. You always listen when someone says please. Yes. Because that's how you establish dominance over somebody. Oh. <laughs> uh, my dad was taking stuff out of the oven without oven mitts the other day, and I yelled at him. Yeah, because who does that?! Yeah, you, the, 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 bruh. It's like, uh, do you want to have blisters all over your hands? Or do you just have that many calluses where nothing affects you anymore? Because, so, teach me your heat resistant skills, uh, D Dana, Dana's dad. I think it's because they live in Australia and it's always hot there. Ah, that would grant them heat resistance, of course. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, the other day, I, I just had a funny thought just now. Like, uh, Dion, uh, Ricky's player, was saying how uh, 
uh, drow are actually Australian because one, they're from the Underdark, aka from the under down from the on, land down, down under. Down under, yeah. Baba yeah. Baba. <laughs> Good song, by the way. Yeah. How uh, they're associated with big ass uh, spiders and stuff, and I'm like thinking, imagine giving drow heat resistance because of that. <laughs> it's like. I, I think Dion's onto something, though. Honestly. It makes it... sense. Oh, hey, this music plays uh, when you don't listen to your friends when they say please. Let me raise it because I asked it quiet. Yeah, I don't typically play Ori music um during my streams because it's not that i don't like it i love the soundtrack it's just it's so emotional especially coming up with this track right now it's winter so everyone's wearing coats and stuff but is it, it isn't that cold it's still 14 celsius or centigrade uh, do you use celsius or centigrade um one burn I remember getting was years ago. I didn't burn myself, though. My brother took something out of the oven and then grabbed my throat with his mitten hand, and it felt like the heat on the button. Oh, so you got a first-degree burn. Like, Oof. Your brother was an idiot. <laughs> For doing that. It's like, I remember heat takes a while to cool down. Yeah, my brother's got this big-ass uh, iron uh, pan. Big old heavy dense iron pan you know those big heavy skillets right yeah the well, one that peach uses in smash brothers <laughs> yeah well he nearly forgot to tell me uh that he recently cooked and i was about to grab the pan because there was stuff in it uh-huh and and i nearly bur burnt my hand luckily i felt the heat before then and he was like wait 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 don't touch it don't touch it. it's still hot i'm like why do you have the freaking handle sticking out if it's not cooled down? Yeah. I love Inspiriting, by the way, this song. Yeah. Easily one of my favorites. Uh, I've burnt myself a few times on the ex Express on the machine. How? Dana, I'm concerned for it's you. It's like, D Dana, were you that, uh, are you that eager to get your, uh, your, your, your espresso? Dana, my beautiful, beautiful sister, please. <laughs> I, I love you, but I, I, I'm concerned for you. Uh, the steam wand gets hot and steam hot. Yes. Um, in certain intervals, steam can also kill you. Like, it's like, um, you, you know the whole thi thing in video games where it's like, oh, steam just pushes you away, right? Yeah. In real life, it melts your skin and causes you to die from the shock alone. Yeah, because, uh, s steam is still technically evaporated water. And what's heated water but scalding? Yeah. Yeah. Instant death. If not a serious burn. No bully, that's metal. I want to Google that. Uh, Dana. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, good, good, good for writing, but. Dana, baby girl, please. Uh, I I don't think you can I don't think you can stop her on this one. I know I can't. Like Dana, Dana likes parasitic creatures. So it's hard to reason with her on some things, but it's fine. Yeah. I like to think that uh Satan made um parasites and pinned them on god to make him the fall boy because you know god is too nice uh so he it's not like he's gonna say no i didn't make those things he would take the fall because you know he's so good 
Oh yeah, I made a freaking joke about that. Like, um, there's this series I used to watch called God Makes Random Animals or something like that. Uh huh. And I mentioned where it's like, uh, God's like, okay, take a spider, the angel. Oh God, please tell me you're not making another tarantula. They're like, no, 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 make it small. Okay, now make it fluffy. Okay, make its eyes huge. Okay, this is kind of cute. And make it jump towards every uh, towards anything. Ah, uh, I knew there was something else. Oh, one more thing. Give it little droplets for hat. And that's how God made jumping spiders. Jumping spiders! I love jumping spiders. They're so cute! Yeah, and they're so honestly, intelligent. Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm not really afraid of jumping spiders. I mean, yeah, they're really they're really freaky to look at up close, but honestly, I need to be braver with them because, you know, they don't hurt you unless you give them a reason to, which right. Honestly, doesn't often happen because usually they just like see you and then hide away and then, you know, study you for a bit. Or some of them are actually really curious about you. Yeah. So if like, they jump I on you, a... don't freak out. Let them do their thing. Yeah, like, I had a jumping spider, like, kind of crawl around my arm, just, like, kind of, like, looking up at me. I'm like, oh, hi, little fella. I didn't hurt him, didn't bother him. I just put my arm on a bush, let him crawl off. Just checking me out. Yeah. Jumping spiders are friends. I don't think most of them can hurt you. They're too small. Yeah, like... Honestly, I don't think their venom really penetrates our bodies that much. All we get is just an itch, and that's it. Yeah, and they hunt, like, really bad insects, too. Like, they hunt mosquitoes, they have they hunt wasps, they hunt moths, the really annoying ones that eat clothes, to be precise. Yeah, Spider-Man's powers are based on a jumping spider, hence why he can't really spin webs very well, if at all. Plus, the babies are so tiny. Yeah. And Peter was a baby when he became Spider-Man in the comics. Yeah, he was only 15 when he became Spider-Man. Yeah. Which not a lot of people know. I just think spider jumping spiders are the best. Yeah. Now, another type of spider I like is one that doesn't really bother you. It just kind of, like, hides away. It's called the trapdoor spider. Oh, the trapdoor spider. Those things are weird. Yeah, but they're so cool because they, like, dig little holes under the ground. And if they, and if they feel your vibrations, they close up their trap. Okay. They they will not bother you in the slightest. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, I think it's purely because uh the uh trapdoor part of their name uh looked, it it always looked off to me. But maybe I need to take another look at them. Because they, they don't really bother you. They just sit in their holes and they wait for food to come to them. Yeah, they're patient little buggers. Yeah, a lot of spiders are pretty harmless, even if they do bite you. And even the most dangerous are really... Yeah. Oh, God, funnel web spiders. Those are the ones are... Yeah. I don't remember those, but... Yeah, I can... I they're can one only of the more... Them. Yeah, they're one of the more deadlier spiders in Australia. Um, I know for us, we have the brown recluse, which, okay, typically I know they don't go out of the way biting people, but if they do, it's bad. They, they get to be a pretty decent side too. Yeah. I remember one day I was like, uh, fixing up in my, uh, fire pit and I turned over rock and there was this huge wolf spider about the nearly the size of my hand. Whoa. She was huge, and I do believe it was a female, because they don't normally get that big. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, some species, you know, of anything, really, uh, sometimes the ladies are bigger than the guys, so I, I believe it. Yeah. Uh, the females... Yeah, the females do are bigger than most of the males, but the males have the more deadlier venom. They are deadly, but there hasn't been a death in, like, 20 years? I don't know. I need to double check. But treatment is very good. Same for redback. Is, are redbacks what you call black widows, or are they a different species? I love the I love black widow spiders, how they look. Do you like black widow the superhero? 
Um, no, that I'm not a big Marvel or DC fan, but I, I think okay, I remember fine. her. Yeah. Uh, basically, she's the super secret agent. That's it. <laughs> oh yeah, that that one chick. Uh, yeah. The w yeah it. the one character who didn't get to do anything and only got her movie posthumously. Oof. They're kind of Black Widow. Yeah. Um, personally, what bothered me about the MCU version is that they took away her Russian accent, even though, uh, you know, Nat in every other interpretation of the character has a Russian accent, considering she is Russian. <laughs> if they wanted to go for her being Russian American, I would buy it. But you know, no, she was specific. She has the same origin story as she always does. You know. She was trained to be an assassin. She was Russian born, and yeah. Yeah. And she became a hero because she wanted to get the red off her ledger. Her words. Uh, they're kind of a Black Widow. And Black Widow, the hero, is sick. Wait, no, I had a brain fart. I was thinking of Black Cat. No, yeah, no. Uh, Black Cat is one of Spider Man's lovers. And. Well, at least in the comics, uh, at one point she had bad luck powers, which is what set her uh, apart from uh, DC's Black Cat. Sorry, sorry, Catwoman. DC's Catwoman, Batman's villain, slash anti-hero. Um, but then Marvel's like, nah, let's just make her Spider-Man's Catwoman. They won't know the difference. Comic books are dumb. <laughs> I mean, I'm making a webcomic, so I don't think I have much room to talk, but, um, I don't know. I like to think my stories are somewhat grounded in reality. Somewhat. Yeah. Hey, I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab something to drink. Okay. I'm usually a DC guy, but Black Cat is a really strong design. Like, yeah, um... I think you would, uh, Dana, I think you would like uh, Black Cat in uh, the City That Never Sleeps DLC for uh, Insom Spidey, because uh, there is actually one scene where she does something really, really catty. Like, there was a, there was an abandoned bar that they, that they both fought in together, and Felicia basically just walked along uh, the available uh, alcohol, and just like, as she's moving along, she just like, drop, 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 finds one, pours her glass, and then just, uh, flicks it away. <laughs> like, that is very cat-like behavior. <laughs> I know you're not a very big Marvel guy, but I think you would adore, uh, I honestly think you would adore Insom Spider-Man. Like, seriously, watch a playthrough of it. Or, um, if you can, get the game for yourself and play it. Like, it is, it is that good. Um, plus it also takes place, um, in a Spider-Man story where he's already been Spider-Man for about eight years. So, um, Pete's a young adult and he's dealing with young adult problems. I'm sure there's a lot of Marvel stuff I'd like. I'm certainly not against it. I'll try to find a playthrough. Yes, please do. And, um, specifically watch the PS4 version if you can. Because, <laughs> um, the PS5 remaster isn't bad. It's just they kind of gave Peter facial reconstruction surgery and made him look more like Tom Holland, and it's gross, so... Look for the PS4 version. Trust me. <laughs> uh, I'd actually really like to read some X-Men stuff, but there's so many. Yeah. Um, I know Alec was into X-Men for a while. If not for Wolverine, but yeah. Hey, funny! Ins Insomniac Games is, uh, making a Wolverine game. Um, I literally said this about Black Cat in the Insomniac Spider-Man game. She has an ada ada way of speaking. Well, that's just Black Cat in general, if written really well. <laughs> and I don't really, uh, see the 90s cartoon in much of a positive light anymore, but, um, Black Cat in, in that universe is like mega swole because she has like an offshoot of Captain America's super soldier serum so she's buff make black cat buff 
I'm back. Oh, welcome back. Uh, we're we're just uh gushing about Black Cat. Ah. Uh, in the '90s cartoon of Spider-Man, uh, she actually has like uh, an offshoot version of uh Captain America Super Soldier Serum, so she's really buff because of it, and it's kind of hot. <laughs> There, there, there goes my there goes my taste in women showing again. Buck woman appears. Um, I guess it's also uh due to in part that uh she was voiced by uh i i believe her voice actress and motion cap actor in spider-man ps4 is uh um erica lindbeck hmm. i believe that's her actress hang on Uh, yeah, Erica Lindbeck. Me sitting here admiring the man that is Dante from Devil May Cry. Yeah, well, The good Devil May Cry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no. Like, if you want to distinguish between the two Devil May Crys, just say DMC for the bad one, Devil May Cry for the actual title. Yeah. Like, hell, Double May Cry is the subtitle of DMC. So, yeah, just say Double May Cry if you're referring to the good games. Somebody actually legitimately got mad at me for liking Double May Cry and not the uh, reboot. Uh, I'm like, okay. I'm like uh, sitting here like. They're like, they're wrong. <laughs> And, uh, I'm sorry like, to cut you off. Uh, sorry to cut you off. Uh, but uh, is Evolution one of the movies? I honestly wasn't big on the movies, but I just like how a lot of the characters seem the comic from the outside looking in. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, Evolution was the cartoon show uh, where uh, Wolverine's costume was orange, like it was in the comics at one point. Um, X Men Origins Wolverine is well the movie. Oh, now you're making me remember freaking uh, Hulk versus uh, yeah, Hulk Wolverine. versus Wolverine. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, there was another movie uh, done by the same animation studio where it's Hulk versus Thor, but no one really talks about that one much because it didn't have uh, Nolan North as Deadpool in it. Actually, that movie alone, I think, helped popularize Deadpool. So, thanks Hulk versus Wolverine, and thanks Nolan North. <laughs> Like, because I remember, like, it was, like, after the movie, Deadpool comes out of this freaking, this, the... Yeah, the rubble of, of, of the secret base, and he's, he's like, like, I'm alive! <laughs> yeah, it's like, I can't believe it! I'm alive! I'm alive! Get stomped by the Hulk. Ow! Ow! No. It's like, it's okay, he's got regenerative, regenerative cells, he'll be fine, he'll yeah, be he, fine. Yeah, I think Deadpool has the greatest healing factor out of all the characters. In fact, it kind of made him crazy. Because, you know, his brain is re, uh, rehealing and unhealing at the same time. Uh, because and remember, okay, he, he, yeah, he had a fatal um, brain tumor before he got his powers. Yeah. God, man. When are we... I, I can't wait. I, I know it's coming that we're probably going to get, get the Avengers versus X-Men uh, movies. Eventually. Because um, I like to see the big metal boy more. Because I, I liked him. Colossus? Yeah, the big metal boy. Yeah, Colossus. Yeah. Or in... um. The X Men arcade uh, fan base. Oh! <laughs> Every time he uses his powers. That, like game, that, game, that game had really bad voice acting, but it, it's what <laughs> made it fun. X Men, yeah. welcome to die. 
Oh no. No, they, that's how they wrote it, and that's how they delivered the line. X-Men, welcome to die. That was real. <laughs> uh, it was one of the Marvel shows I watched on Kids WB, and Shadowcat was the character I remember the most, next to a few others. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, it was Batman Brave and the Bold, I think. It's like when... Oh, what was her face? Canary, Black Canary, Huntress, and Catwoman. Oh, got yeah, uh, together. The, bir the Birds of Prey. Yeah, they got together and they started singing that song. Uh-huh. Because apparently Bruce went, uh, was hypnotized or something like that, or was wearing this weird cloak thing that apparently changes his uh, alignment or something like that. Uh-huh. Oh, that actually um, sounds like a D&D &D item. <laughs> A cloak you know, that I changes your alignment. <laughs> yeah, well, what I saw, well, what I... Because, like, oh my god, I don't know why, they freaking banned that song from the from the American version, but it was like, it's so good! Uh, I it's think like... it's because of the very not-so-subtle innuendo in it. Yeah. Like, so they were talking about Blue Beetle, I remember that one. Uh -huh. That he needed to come out of his shell. It's like, are you guys implying he's bisexual? Also, uh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Blue Beetle is usually depicted as a kid, <laughs> or at least uh, one of the Blue Beetles is. Yeah, I forget what Blue Beetle was in Batman Brave and the Bald. I think he was a teenager, but I could be wrong. Yeah, if he was, then ew. <laughs> uh. The Flash apparently finishes too fast. Oh okay. yeah, that's that's what got them banned. <laughs> that's what got the song banned. I'm like, oh my Be god. Because beca because he came too early. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, Plastic Man can expand but becomes putty in my hand. Oh Jesus. Uh, Aqu <laughs> Aquaman was really courageous. His little fish less outrageous. I'm like, I spat out my drink, and I was like, D did they just imply he's too what? Oh my god. Uh, big personality, tiny penis. <laughs> I guess. Uh, green arrow. She is the only thing that can shoot straight, or something like that. Oh god. Uh, like, did, did, did. Now that I think they implied that he was bisexual. Maybe. And of course, Batman himself. It's like I like to see his secret back cave. I'm like, like You wanna No You wanna butt fuck no. him? Like, no, Catwoman, please. I mean uh, Catwoman would be the one to say that. <laughs> Yeah, at this I... at this point, it's no secret that um, Selena and Bruce are made for each other. <laughs> um, but apparently, oh, Batman doesn't fuck. That's what villains do. It's like fuck off. In in Telltale's Batman, uh, you have the choice of fucking Catwoman. Oh, Granted, boy. behind b behind Harvey Dent's back, but you can. <laughs> It's like, I know the, like, the one thing I remember when it comes to Batman and Catwoman is that their relationship is, uh, complicated, as I like to say. No, uh, that's the greatest way to, uh, you know, describe them. Their relationship is complicated. It's like, they like each other, but they're, like, on the opposite side. Yeah, and Catwoman wants Batman to be a criminal, but Batman wants Catwoman to change. It's like opposites attract, and that—that's kind of like the some ideas I like when it comes to like making villains and heroes. <laughs> it's like you want to play off that whole deal. Yeah, the duality. Which yeah, it's classic. It's it's a classic um type of relationship to write around, especially romantic ones. Yeah, the sexual tension it goes through the roof. Um. And again, 
Uh, I bring up Telltale's Batman because, honestly, it... say what you will about Telltale, especially back in the day, but um, it probably has one of my favorite versions of most uh, of the principal Batman characters. Um, like, Catwoman especially, and uh, Harvey Dent. Um, but on the note of Selina, uh, there, yeah, there is a sense that there's more, that there's more to her than she's letting on, but, um, especially if you, like, um, play out the romantic angle, what, she, a lot of the shit she says is, is, uh, really, really fun, and I think it's part due to the fact that Laura Bailey is voicing her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so of course it's gonna be good um although if you um once you save her uh during the uh opening um if you say don't struggle or you fall she says but that's what you crave the struggle i know men like you like ah <laughs> oh i remember there was i don't remember what the movie was called but i remember um cat one of catwoman's most precious pets got kidnapped or something like that oh yeah um uh uh i know who you're talking about uh the cat in the animated series yeah i remember because like she actually went to batman for help she's like i need your help one of my animals or one of my cats is missing she even says like if you can get him back for me i will drop my life of crime Yeah, hang on. I need to look up uh, her cat's name. I think her cat was like some sort of... Spy. Isis! Isis! That's her name. Isis. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hello, Isis. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, Isis in the animated series really likes Batman because, you know, the first time they met, uh, when Isis was about to get ran over, Batman went out of his way to save her, and the next time they meet in uh, Selena's apartment, uh, Isis is all over him. Yeah. Because, like, I remember, because, like, this also shows that Catwoman is not, even though she likes to, she portrays she is strong and stuff, but I like the idea that she does turn to Batman for help. Yeah, and back on, on the subject of Telltale, um, Selina definitely has the capacity to do some real good. It's just, you know... Um, given her profession, she's been on her own for so long, it's very easy for her to flip that switch. And especially if you push it, you can actually surprise Selena with how much you believe in her. <laughs> and it's like, dude, why are you saying all the these things to me? Didn't at one point Joker try to freaking uh, go after Catwoman and it just backfired on him hard? I don't remember that uh maybe in one interpretation yeah because i remember like joker found out or like knew of catwoman and batman's really weird relationship so he thought he could use catwoman to get get to batman and it backfired hard uh maybe that was a thing in uh the dark knight returns i don't remember uh wait this hand is gloved okay or is it i don't think they're they're not gloved okay no it's just that she looks really pale in that picture I getcha. Uh, but yeah, uh, Dana's definitely right with uh, Telltale's interpretation of the Joker. Not my favorite Joker, but I liked what they did. Because um, how many versions of the Joker uh, do you know that are basically chaotic evil from the start? <laughs> um... Telltale's Joker, you know, John Doe, as they call him, because uh, one day he just showed up at Arkham Asylum and just lived there ever since, but since he never had his uh, name on file, they just called him John Doe. Um, but while you think at first, because you do see him in the first season of Telltale's Batman, where he helps you break out of Arkham, 
um, and he has this very huge hard on for violence. Uh, turns out in season two, he's actually really sweet and misunderstood. Huh. And um, eventually he becomes the Joker depending on your choices. Like, he becomes the Joker no matter what, which is the heartbreaking thing. But um, depending on your interactions with him, he could be like either your best friend who's just led astray um, because of his, you know, uh, love for violence. Uh, to, well, the classic Joker. <laughs> uh, and one of the most heartbreaking uh, exchanges is the final choice on the uh, vigilante route for the Joker is um, when he asks you, did you ever think of me as your friend? And you can either tell him yes or no, but if you tell him yes, he says, you are one messed up guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it takes a messed up guy to know a messed up guy, you know? Yeah, but uh, with Troy Baker's delivery as Batman, he's like, of course. Of course you were. Of course you were my friend. Uh, it's just... Gosh. I'm glad it isn't 100% canon, but it's a nice way to go about it. And Boss Babe Harley makes a lot of sense, too. Yeah! Harley is actually actually has been a criminal for a while in Telltale's Batman, and honestly, in terms of looks, she's my favorite. <laughs> she's my favorite Harley design. Um, and they actually did a bit of an inversion with the usual Joker and Harley relationship, where you know Joker is the dominant one, and Harley is the submissive one. They reversed it for the Telltale version, and Harley is kind of a bitch. <laughs> But John loves her. <laughs> hey, you gotta. I mean, no one's judging you, buddy. You know, you, you do what you do, whatever you're into. Yeah. John. Uh, uh, John actually has um, a really slightly adorable response if you call him like, "What are you crazy?" He like he gets offended and then calms himself down enough to say, "Calling someone crazy." is rude <laughs> as it, it, it's kind of similar to how like you accidentally say something like racist and then someone corrects you on that <laughs> it's just for crazy people for john that sounds like a fun game you sounds like something fun we can probably you know stream or whatever yeah i mean if we are going to stream it, I prefer, you know, we have someone who's never played the game before because, you know, um, it's right definitely... Here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we just got to make sure, okay, uh, can this be recorded or, um, and also, can you record it yourself? And if so, how well does it run? Oh, boy. Imagine telling him no, literally heartless. Protect John Doe. Yes, I agree. Protect John Doe. Attacked. Um, but yeah, funny thing. Uh, the guy that the guy they got uh to voice the Joker in uh t the Telltale games has actually been in, been a Joker impressionist for years. Yeah, wasn't you say it was Tro Troy Baker? No, Troy Baker. Well, Tro funny enough, uh, Troy Baker was the Joker at one point, but that was for Arkham Origins. Uh, no, Troy Baker was Batman and Bruce. Uh, Anthony Ingruber is Joker. Ah. Um, and yeah, he's he's done, like, Han Solo impressions and pretty much every version of the Joker since then. Like, um, Jack Nicholson, um, Heath Ledger, Mark Hamill. Um, and now he has his own Joker, which... At first, I wasn't really a big fan of his Joker voice because it's, like, too uneven to me. But honestly, I think maybe that was the point. Like, he sounds nothing... Uh, like you would expect from the Joker, but he's not supposed to be. Yeah. Oh my god, now you're making me remember, like, when the Joker returns in, ba in Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, yes, I love that movie so fucking much. Oh my god, I love the... Uh, which... What, what was his name? Uh, the, the new Batman. Terry. Yeah, yeah Terry McGinnis. I love Terry. Terry was like, wait a minute, I like to talk. Yeah, I can out-talk this talker. Yeah, it's like, wait, I like to talk too. <laughs> yeah, he beat the Joker by doing the one thing no other hero before him has done. 
heckled the fuck out of him, and it worked. <laughs> Stop laughing at me! But I thought the Joker wanted to make people laugh. You're not Batman! No, I'm not. I love that. I love when you do that. Like, like you know the villain is super power powerful, but you know their one weakness, which is meant, which is beating them mentally. Yeah, and uh, the thing about Joker is that. Um, he's not used to getting getting made fun of. Um, and honestly, Terry, at least in the DC animated universe, Terry is my favorite Batman. It's like we have Bruce, of course, but Terry is better. Yeah, the, Terry definitely, from what I remember from Bat uh, Batman Beyond, he was definitely had his own unique style. Yeah. Um, that's... for one thing, he doesn't have Bruce's training or experience, but that's what makes him way more compelling, in my opinion, because he doesn't have the experience, meaning you're a lot more on edge because of it. Right, he's more of a street fighter, because, like, that's, yeah. what, that's what he kind of grew up with. Yeah. And that's what makes him, makes him dangerous. You don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, and honestly, uh, his... Um, you know, criminal uh, criminal record uh, actually gives him something a bit of an edge over uh, Bruce because he's been a part of that part of that world at one point. He feels bad for it, of course, but it's you know helped him more than once. Right. Um, On that villain's one weakness, this thing I really enjoy OP villains beaten by something non physical like that. Yeah, Joker's downfall is his hubris, <laughs> and the minute right. you break that down, he. He becomes more unstable, but he becomes a lot easier to beat because of it. Yeah. I felt so bad for the Robin in that freaking movie, too. Yeah, like, yeah oh Tim. My God. Tim Drake, yeah. It's like, mother, like, what the fuck? It's like, they couldn't bring Jason Todd into that universe, but they decided to screw over Tim Drake. <laughs> He was like what, 16, 17 when that all that shit happened? Uh yeah, it, yeah, 16 at the youngest, I think. That was like holy shit. Like if I remember, they did like a lot of mental shit. To yeah, him. uh Joker basically uh brainwashed him after uh torturing him for several uh days at a time because you know as the joker himself said but all too soon the shocks and the serums took their toll and the dear lad began to share such secrets with me secrets that are mine alone to know bruce oh yeah oh that's the one thing i actually kind of like about the joker because when he does find out about batman's true identity that's his alone he does not share that with any other of the villains yeah, not to mention, he kind of finds the end result, uh, you know, disappointing. Oh. He's this guy. Okay. He's like, it'd be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. Oh, what ah, the heck, what I'll heck? laugh anyway. <laughs> and, and Terry yeah. took those words and reversed them. Yeah, uh, you're right, he did. I never made the connection until now. It's like, you made me laugh, but only because I think you're kind of pathetic. It's like, ooh, burn! Yeah, he holds no sympathy for Joker. In fact, the whole movie, he's kind of seen the Joker as a joke, despite how legendary he is. Then again, uh, it's also compacted by the fact that Bruce never told him about the Joker. Um, because of what happened. Pretty much. I'm hoping, that, I'm hoping that in the next kind of reincarnations of, of the Batman that we get to explore probably my second quote-unquote favorite villain of the Batman series. What's that? The Riddler. Oh, uh, you'd, pro you'd probably like um, the uh, new version from uh, the Batman film with Robert, Robert Pattinson. Because yeah. in, that, in that one, well, he's from what I know, legitimately terrifying, not to mention uh, they threw in a serial killer angle on him. 
Yeah. Like, because, like... Yeah. Because I want to say the Riddler is, like, right up there, like, maybe second place to Joker as one of Batman's most terrifying villains. Oh, uh, not many people would agree with you on that. Um... Which, you know, depending on the version, yeah, he can he can be really intimidating, but I guess it's because they don't often take the intimidating angle with him, where people don't really go with that. Which, funny thing, the Telltale version also makes him scary. Because, <laughs> like, what's more sc Okay, we- the Joker is outright, like, we know he's evil. We know what he's about to do. Uh-huh. The Riddler, however- he makes things, he does things in, like, like his name says, it's the Riddler. He does things in riddles, and there's no telling what all those riddles are going to lead up to. Yeah. Like, there's nothing more scary than a villain that doesn't outright share what they're about to do. Yeah, I can definitely, I can definitely see where you're coming from. Um, it's also because of, you know, how unforgiving he is with with his riddles if you you know take too long to answer or answer wrong because his punish punishments are usually very severe yeah and yes dana i the scarecrow is also up there too he's he's definitely a very scary one from what i remember he terrified me yeah, as a i kid mean, when I, mean I hope so his name is scarecrow <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, as a kid, I was terrified of him on the, uh, animated series. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, in the animated series, uh, the Scarecrow had way more, uh, redesigns than any other Batman villain. <laughs> and that, like, you start with the, you know, typical humanoid Scarecrow look, and- What the hell is happening? Um. You start with the humanoid Scarecrow look- and um, that in itself isn't too terrifying. Then you get more of the same with the second version. And then in um, season three, it's like, holy shit, what is that? Is that a noose around his neck? Yeah. I'm gonna... What the hell is happening with my fill tool? I want a version of the Riddler being the usual gay little man, but also being legit terrifying. I guess, like, half the guys I draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's happening with my fill tool. It's not working. I really don't know what the deal is. It's just, like, no. it stopped working for some reason. Uh... Me start, maybe? Uh, God damn it, maybe. Hang on. Uh, okay, hang on. Let's let's save your thing first. Hold on. Let me zoom in and see your fail. Well, it's too late now. Okay, we're gonna save this and we're gonna collapse everything. All right. Yeah, like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. And, uh, we'll open it again and see what happens. You know, it's actually kind of funny with that one picture of Lily in her dress. Uh, I yeah. mean, she's she's just a smidge taller than Rilu, which is like a small baby Pokemon. Huh. Okay, let's try again. Like, I just want to fill in this arm, please, with s skin colors. Uh, 
And sometimes I accidentally knock settings. Like one time I thought a certain pen was lagging for a month, and then I realized I knocked the stabilization to 100. What the fuck? Uh. Hello? Hello? Refer only to editing layer. I don't know what I did! Is it not feeling? Dan asks, "Is it not feeling well at all while you while you click?" Yeah, I am pressing it several times. It's doing nothing. Makes no fucking sense. What the? I'm not feeling in gray. Okay, wait. What the fuck? Filling in gray? Yeah, like I went to the line, la line layer to see what happened and then apparently it's filling in gray for some reason. Oh, did you, oh God, what is it called? Did you accidentally turn on the gray filler? I don't know, but if that's a thing, it needs to die. <laughs> Because that's not what I want at all. Because that's something that happens to me in Photoshop, is that sometimes it'll turn off the uh, RTG. Hmm. What the I fuck? Don't... I don't... Dana, can you come in? <sighs> I don't know what happened. I don't remember pressing anything, but apparently... Apparently I did something. Try quickly using the ten tool, pen tool in the select there and see if just that works. Okay. Brush, no. Pen, no. What? Huh? Excuse me? What? What? Okay, it, it it uses red just fine. It uses Come on. It uses green just fine. Why can't it use the fucking Are you kidding me? Really? You can't well... Okay, so you can't select Pick up color from layer. Okay. So. If it's not on the layer. You don't select it. But. If it's on the layer. Then you select. What the fucking hell. Why did. Is this a I... recent change? It's never done that to me before. I don't know. I've been flailing around with the settings. For. Several minutes now, and I thought I pressed something weird, but no, apparently it's it's being bitch, it's being picky and bitchy with my color choices. It's like I'm tr I'm not trying to work on the bottom layer right now. I'm sorry. No, no, no. what are you apologizing for? It's fine. <laughs> you know who we can blame. Fucking Hoopa. Fucking Hoopa! <sighs> that being said, I'm gonna fill in Lily's eye colors and pretend that didn't happen. Yay. Just so they're out of the way. No, Dana, we're not blaming you. We're blaming fucking Hoopa. No, 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 no. Dana, you are absolutely fine. <laughs> um...
but like I really don't know why it's such a big deal with whatever layer you're on. Like, okay, let's test this theory and make sure I'm not going fucking mental. Okay, so... We're on this layer. Okay, so it's skin colored. Let's go to this layer now. Pick the same color. Nothing happens. What? I don't know. Why is it like such I... why is it such a big deal, Clip Studio Paint? Why don't you just let me do my fucking job? Fucking who? You brought me into this, now we're gonna end this my way. <laughs> Sign the damn paper, woman! Yeah, like okay, let's look at my uh Yeah, pick up color from lair. Hang on. What if we obtain display color? And then... Okay, okay, I know what happened. Yeah? It says pick up color from lair. And if we, if we select it here, nothing happens. But, if we obtain display... If we select it uh, to obtain display color, do this, then it allows us to use the same color. I don't know how it changed, but thank god oh. I fixed it. Thank fucking god. Mystery solved. Yay! Now, still blaming Hoopa. Yeah, still blaming Hoopa. Fuck Hoopa. It knows what it did. We know it peed in the Cheerios. <laughs> it liked peeing in the Cheerios, and that's disgusting. Honestly, one of those multi one honestly one of those multi streams would be pretty comfy if I could work out how to stream from my tablet, and if I had a functioning <laughs> Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um... It would, it would be nice to uh, do a multi-art stream with someone, because I haven't really done a multi-stream for a while. So, something like that would be nice. Ironically, Heaton and Dr. Crafty had a multi-art stream, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Crystal. It was disgusting, but Hoopa didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Hoopa doesn't care about anyone... But, but itself. And treasure, apparently. And treasure, yes. Yeah, everybody... Yeah, anytime I show a uh, freaking uh, Mitsuzune to people and they're like, wait, this is a fox? I'm like, yeah! I get the impression that it's a water fox, you know, considering its name also has the Japanese word for water in it. Yeah, it's literally called the Bubble Fox Wyvern. Yeah. And it's so cool, because, like, when it, um, when it moves around, it actually slides like it's moving in water, but it's actually using, um, a special, uh, soap, uh, sod that it makes. Yeah. Yeah. It's also called the Bewitching Dancer. I believe it. Everyone's like, well, why don't you make a persona? I'm like, out of Mitsuzune. I'm like, nah. It's like, 
what? I'm just saying I like this creature. That doesn't mean I want to bang it. And that also, that's also not indicative to the fact that, hey, if you make a persona, that doesn't mean you want to fuck animals. That it just means you see yourself as an animal you really like. Right. And not plus, all, I not love... all furries are sex crazed animals, okay? Right. And I love that Suzune's design. It's so. It's so aesthetically pleasing to me. Like, whoever is giving you shit for just existing Jen needs to check check themselves. No, they just need to realize that I'm I I'm not a degenerate like them. That too. But it, it's like, like a... if you're getting so uppity about what someone likes and dislikes, if they don't hurt anyone, um, then that really shows you what kind of person they are. I made a persona just for fun, and even then, just and even then, I mostly converted them into a more humanoid shape. I wouldn't call myself a furry. I just think anthers are made. See? Yeah, same thing. Even I agree. Even Dan, like I like furry art. I like certain furry mm -hmm. artists. I think some of their art is really pretty and really nice to look at. Yeah, there's some damn well, good artists in that community. Like how a lot of D and D artists really make anthropomorphic animals it's like that's that's nice to look at that doesn't make me a furry yeah and Hell. even even if you are are a furry it, it it's fine like right i have nothing against furries as long as you're not forcing it down other people's throats and especially if you're not the hypersexual kind then you should probably go go to a counselor because that could get yeah hurt. But... that actually made me that actually made me laugh that they claim that my therapist is trying to su suppress who I really am. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, my cognitive therapist is actually helping me get down to some of the problems I have. Yeah, it's like, that's what a therapist does! <laughs> it's their job to help you out, you fucking cunt! Specifically, I'm like, talking about I'm talking about the people who are being assholes to you, not you. You're fine. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I just wanted to be clear. <laughs> I'll post my person uh, perso uh, persona things. Okay, yeah. Show us. Yeah, go. Oh yeah, you do have an art thread. Yeah, but, Got it. But, yeah, of course I do. Oh yeah. I I post things there almost every day. Yeah. Moth. In fact, I, yeah. Moth. I love her. Um, but, I love yeah, the I, uh, that... funny thing, actually. Um, if I can show off a commission I just finished um, yesterday, actually. Uh, this is for uh, Cyborg Charlotte. Um, oh, remember, yeah. The... Remember Wunderkind, everyone? Well, yeah. she is done. She thick. Look at her. <laughs> Well, Look at it. Yeah, honestly, very, very simple design uh, compared to uh, most characters that I've done for uh, Charlotte so far, but um, I really liked figuring out how to, you know, work in her, um, work in her chubbiness. And I think, I think judging from her reactions, she really liked uh, how I, how I pulled it off. Like, it certainly wasn't like that uh, with the first uh, go around with the sketch, but then as I worked on it more, um, it's like I couldn't stop. I, I had to continue this. Meanwhile, you're drawing Lily and she's... <laughs> Hair! Hair! Thanks, Dana. And yes, your your mafo your mafo is is very is very nice. I love the fact that I do watch like a lot of um, uh, pet channels, like uh, people that like take how to take care of lizards and stuff like that. Yeah. And how one person he's got like a bunch of little lizards and he breeds uh, silk moths. Huh. Okay. And when the now he likes to make sure that some of the silk moth worms, you know, hatch into actual moths. Well, he calls them sky puppies. And apparently it's been unanimously agreed in the uh, lizard community that 
all silk moms are now called sky puppies. And so now I'm like picturing Dana's uh, moth characters being called sky puppies. <laughs> Honestly, I buy it. Uh, that's, that's a good name for them. I agree. Yeah, Sky Puppy's a cute name. Honestly, I kind of like the lighter hue. Hue. I'm trying to... I'm probably misremembering uh, for some reason, but uh, for some reason I remember uh, Gandalf handling a sky puppy in Lord of the Rings. You know, when um, Saruman was, you know, holding him on his uh, his uh, tower while he's all, you know, like, bloody and bruised. And then oh, this yeah. moth came to him and he, like, said a message and, like, whisper speak and... and yeah. Go get help, Sky Puppy. And then Sky Puppy was like, okay, you get Eagle. <laughs> I'm just picturing freaking Dana's uh, one moth character, the evil one, reacted to be calling a, be called a Sky Puppy. <laughs> yeah, honest. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, are you talking about the one that I have a crush on? <laughs> yes. Because I have a crush on her. Like, I, I know she's evil, but look at her. I love her. <laughs> I'm, not say, I'm, not say, I'm not saying I can change her, but... She's someone that could probably kick your ass. Haven't you... How long have you been part of my streams? I love women who can kick my ass. <laughs> I have a crush on her. You're her mom! Dana, you're her mom! By technicality. She can make you worse. Oh boy. Technically speaking, I'm kind of, I went gay for a second for one of my characters because I pictured her in thigh high socks. I'm like, fuck. And that would be my uh shadow sorceress. Right. Um I mean I will I will say, um, I did I did have two characters in my story have sex with each other multiple times. But I don't know if I would do the same because that that sounds weird. You know, <laughs> fucking your own character. Like, I, I mean, I could probably understand if they were specifically made for fucking, but I don't know. It's like, what 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 are their thoughts on it? You know? <laughs> what are? I I don't know. Would that be essentially fucking yourself? No, fucking yourself is if it's your persona. <laughs> I mean, uh, and like, like pairing them with yourself, then it would be fucking yourself. I know most of my Fuck girls. You, right? uh, Dana. Fuck you, right? <laughs> like, I know Ritz is bisexual. Um, so she could probably go either way. Not gonna lie, she's definitely a top. Uh-huh. Um uh, Rao, too young. Nope. Uh Eliza, definitely straight, very flirtatious, but she's got quite the stamina. Atra It depends on her mood, but she's definitely a top. Kira, that's... Kira's a switch. I assume most of my characters are five, but there's a couple of others around. Yeah. Um, I guess since we're on the topic, um... I'll start with Alex. Um... I would say Alex is, um... I think at this point she's uh she's demisexual with how I've been writing her. Um at first I thought she was bi, but then I thought, you know, considering she's really close to a certain character, then I I I just think demi just makes more sense for her. Um 
Sovereign is definitely a lesbian. Um, Fira is um. I I can see her being bi actually. Um, well we already know Dora's a lesbian, but um, that's also because you know she and Riona are canonically together. Um, it's just in the context of my story as I'm writing it, they haven't met yet, but they will. <laughs> But, ah. yeah. That, um, but for us, for Brian and I, and for everyone in the abode, actually, um, Riona and Dora have been together for, um, I would say close to three years now. Cute. Yeah. No, if I remember correctly, Demisexual is, um... Uh... I don't know the exact uh, terminology of it, but I do know in general, it's when uh, you form a relationship based on someone you've been, you know, close to for a while. So like, um, you're you're friends with someone, and then you eventually discover, oh, I have feelings for this person. Um, so roughly, it's like that, but for the actual terminology, um. I don't know on the top of my head, but I know generally uh, demisexuals fall in love with their friends. Okay, because like I was like thinking, I thought demisexual means that you like this person, but you won't sleep with them. I'm not sure about that part, but yeah. Uh, oops, sorry, that was my tablet. <laughs> um, let me unplug it. That, that makes a lot of sense for her, actually. She read like she had no interest, uh, but that certain character she's close to. It's getting attracted to people only after they've gotten close to someone. I'd probably say my knifey bug dude would be a Demi Chad, yeah. <laughs> I guess technically, wouldn't that make Kira demisexual? Considering with her and Taka? Um. Well, uh, if you want it to be that way, sure. Um, yeah. But seeing as she does have an attraction towards Easemark. Well, um, you can just say Kira straight, and it would it would be it would be fine. Yeah, I, yeah, obviously. Yeah, because we all know how uh, she felt about Ismark, but that's purely because uh, Ismark looks so similar to Taka, just yeah. you know, twenty nine instead of eighteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ismark is twenty nine years old. You know, I always thought he was younger than that, but I guess not. Well, like, at, le at least my ease mark is nearing thirty. Yeah, because like uh, last, like the last people they told me, like oh, uh, like they make ease mark like around his early twenties rather than his late twenties. Yeah. Although, as I've shown with uh, the way I've been running Curse of Strahd, I run it very differently. Yeah, obviously, and I'm liking how you've been running it. Oh, thanks. Screaming eternally for my poor girl. <laughs> yes. Mark, it could be similarity as well. Um, I guess I can also talk about uh, Chiari, who's um, I, I haven't shown her much, um, but she is um Alexandra's uh mentor, one of her mentors. Uh, very close family friend to, uh, to her family. They even fought in, uh, the 30 generation war together. Um, she's a minotaur. Um, and she would, uh, she's, she's a barbarian by trade. Um, I would say she's definitely asexual. Um, so she's not interested in a relationship and, uh, doesn't really plan on getting into one. <laughs> Makes um, sense. Yeah. Besides, she's like she's she's like a century old, so yeah. She old woman. So not really. I know Minotaur is actually age slower than other creatures. Yeah. Well, I'm also not going off of uh D, &D logic. Um actually um the capstone for Alex typing me uh, typing to me um the capstone for my minotaurs at least they live to be about let me find my 
document for uh, races. Here they are. Okay, Minotaur, 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 Minotaur. Uh, oh, Minotaurs live to be over 900 years old. Damn. Um, I have a few ideas for my characters to be by or pan, and there are some who uh, have different attractions, but I need to figure out how it works. Yes, by all means, do your research. That's important. Um, I know. I know in my world, um, or one uh, I have been planning out with my evilish chronicles is, um, Minotaurs tend to live like maybe up to one thousand and five hundred years. Okay. But when when but when they reach a certain age, their horns start crumbling, which means they need to either a need to prepare for death. Or they need to hurry and prepare uh, to have some offspring. Okay. Also similar with elves in my world too is well with elves. It depends on what they're related to because like I made it in my world that elves are related to dragons or they're like a a um an offshoot from dragons. All right, which is definitely different uh, from my interpretation of elves, who are basically fairy people. Yeah. Um. Moisturize their horns. <laughs> Moisturize their <laughs> ew. <laughs> God damn it, damn. Um. But yeah, like uh, my fairy, uh, uh, my uh, elves are based off of fairies, or rather, they're they're related to fairies, is what I mean to say. They're related to fairies. Um, which, you know, explains why so many of them, including half-elves, are so proficient in anything magical. Um, so, like, give them a magical task and they'll excel at it, just because it's in their blood to be. Um, and, um, at least most of the elves you see are what I guess you would consider snow elves, because they're from, uh, Alinor, the, uh, land of white snow as it's translated to be um which i discovered um usually alf or al is you know connotated with yeah. you know elves um you know alfheim for example mm -hmm. um yeah that's where it came from and i don't know why but the music bot is being very bitchy today like it, it dropped in the middle of uh the Elder Scrolls soundtrack 2. Let's try again. Maybe it doesn't like it. I don't know. No. No, it's... It doesn't do it all the time. It's just very, very picky. Yeah. That's that's honestly what it is. It's picky. But anyway, yeah. Uh, Snow Elves. Uh, they're from Alinor. Um, which... Um, is, I will say, based off of Oriental countries like uh, Japan and China and a little bit of India, but predominantly um, the culture is Japanese. Um, which, you know, still gotta be careful with, you know, not getting to the point of, like, coding, if you know what that is. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, I know really too... Honestly, honestly, I think I do have a good strategy for it. Um, where while the region may be based off of an existing country, its themes can, you know, rely on the main mythology you're basing the story off of. Which, you know, seeing as mine is Celtic-based, I think I have a good strategy. <laughs> Holy shit, we got a wild attacks here. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. Um... Mine are really closely related to the magic of the universe, so they find it pretty easy to read magical formula and live long and stay youthful for a long hour's time, but they're also pretty terrible and will fight you. Oh, assholes. Um, I want to have someone who who's asexual or someone who's a lesbian, but I don't want to be that to be the main focus. I'm thinking about maybe giving people a little hint of their attentions, but like I said, I'm working on how to make them work. Yeah. No, 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 you're fine. This is really awesome. Um, yeah. Honestly, unless there's a big romance arc, that's my favorite way to go about it. Um, yeah, honestly, if you are giving a character um you know an orientation of some sort 
don't make them, for example, the token, the token gay best friend, or don't make them the token, uh, lesbian. Like, no, just make them characters who happen to have, you know, those attractions. Um, and again, like, uh, if me writing for Alex and, uh, all my other characters or anything to go by, um, their orientations just sort of popped up as I was writing them. And, you know, yeah, I did have a plan for Alex to be, you know, to be by when I was writing her. But then, as the story was unfolding, I realized, no, she's more demisexual, if anything else. Because she doesn't have any feelings for any other characters, so why, why would she be, you know? Yeah. Like, she has very strong feelings for this one person, so... Uh, therefore, I think Demi makes more sense for her. Okay. Um, how long have we been going? Uh, two hours. Okay. Not bad, not bad. Okay. Uh, we got a lot of progress done, all things considered. Um. Heck yeah. So... Yeah, I think for now we're we're going to call it and then uh we'll we'll resume this as time goes on. Um so tomorrow night uh I guess I'll just get this out of the way. I really don't think we'll be continuing Xenoblade 2. <laughs> um but if we do, I'll let you know. But if we don't continue it, it like if we don't continue it then, well, the chips will fall as they may. But, um, I'll think of what we could play in the interim. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll, um, finish, uh, uh, finish up, uh, Dust. Like, redo our playthrough of Dust and then get that done. And then, yeah. Yee. Yeah. Yeah. Not enjoying the Xenoblade. I just haven't watched, so I can play it in 40 years or whatever. <sighs> well... Dana, at the very least, play Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. You will love it. Uh, I would definitely play it before Xenoblade 2 and before Xenoblade 3. Just, um... It's also for story reasons, so, yeah. Um... I'll, uh, see you guys uh, tomorrow night. So... Yay. Bye. Have a good night, everybody.